We grow crops, we grow feed for our animals every year, but how good is it? We don't know unless we test it, and we're going to find out about that on our Alpharex program this morning as we ask an expert in that field, and that expert, Dr. John Gazer, Ph.D., and animal nutritionist with Rock River Labs. And Rock River Labs, of course, has a facility in the Colby area. And, Dr. Gazer, when we talk about forage testing, really and truly, from a nutritional standpoint, how important is it to test those forages so we know what we've got? Good morning, Bob. I've got a background in plant breeding as well as animal nutrition. So if I put my plant breeding hat on just for a minute and, and speak maybe a little bit differently than a lot of our audience would be uh, comfortable or have, have heard discussions like this in the past, when, when we're looking to advance uh, hybrid performance, advance inbred lines, we look for variation and then we try and capitalize on that variation more so uh, some of the outliers to the that would be to the benefit of, of whatever whatever we are looking to select toward and for. Within animal nutrition, there is a heck of a lot of variation happening on farm in a lot of different areas. And so uh, nutritional analyses of farm-grown feedstuffs and, and now more recently getting into even purchased feeds is becoming uh, seemingly more crucial as it appears our new normal is hovering around break-even uh, cost per hundredweight. Uh, unfortunately, we've, it's been a pretty challenging economic period the last 12, 18 months, and, and futures forecasts out based on class three milk and corn and beans uh, look to be I- in the same area where we've been the last few years. So, uh, identifying nutrition opportunities by better understanding the nutrition profile of feeds, uh, both farm grown and purchased, can help us to maybe more proactively make decisions rather than waiting for cows to show us what what uh, is going to be the case when getting into the feeds. John, you mentioned outliers when you're looking from the plant, plant breeding standpoint. What are some of those outliers that uh, are important to us when we're talking about uh, these things of better feed for our animals so we don't have to wait for the animals to tell us? Sure. There, there are two different aspects of, of nutrition that I get into, Bob, talking about outliers. To the positive, it would be identifying maybe elite genetics and or management practices that can uh, produce a, a crop and a feedstuff in the silo uh, or, or hay that not only yields well but performs exceptionally well from a nutrition and an energy standpoint through a dairy cow or, or a, a feedlot uh, cattle. Uh, on, on the uh, other flip side of the coin, we are more intensely looking at anti-nutritional aspects of feeds these would be uh, what we've classically thought of as mold and yeast and mycotoxins, but we're more so recognizing as uh, I work closely with veterinarians and we're merging veterinarian nutritional science. There are other uh, nutrition robbing facets of feeds, such as bacterial contamination, uh, maybe some other things that can detract from the nutritional value uh, on paper, at least in terms of what a, what a dairy cow can capture in nutrition. And as we look then at, at those factors, testing these forages, these feeds, so important. But then I guess for the farmer to take a look at those test results and you as a nutritionist helping the farmers put that best feed in front of those animals, what are the numbers, what are the things that you should be looking for when we get that test back from Rock River Labs in the Colby area, John? Great question. I spent a lot of time getting into this. Uh, about 10, maybe 12 years ago, Professor Randy Shaver and, and his colleagues at the University of Wisconsin developed the Milk 2006 Index, which placed a ranking and, and uh, assigned a, a single value to a feedstuff based on a summative uh, equation, predictive equation, incorporating all the nutritional parameters in, in feed, sort of looking at the latest and greatest from a nutrition standpoint and ranking that feed back in 2006. As we've evolved the last 10, 12 years, nutrition analyses, our understanding of rumen digestion, uh, and animal performance has evolved considerably, and unfortunately we don't have a single ranking tool today uh, that, that comes maybe to the chagrin of, of uh, agronomists, plant breeders, uh, folks looking for one single number to rank feeds. But as I look at the nutritional value of, of any feed on farm, I first and foremost start by looking to get a handle on what is the fiber content of that feed because fiber is always the least digestible nutrient uh, in any feed stuff in front of dairy cows. We, we have a need for functional fiber for a healthy cow, but we, we don't want to put too much fiber uh, into the diet in, in a lot of situations because we're going to be diluting out other 
nutrients such as protein and starch and sugar, those would be the next factors that I look at because we, we want to, in most cases, have a, uh, a, a really strong profile of protein and starches and sugars in the feed, which are about twice the digestibility and energy value of protein. And then beyond that, the fiber and starch digestibility within the rumen are also important to consider. So I use uh, rumen in situ starch digestion uh, measures, meaning where we take feedstuffs and we actually put them in the rumen of a cannulated cow to get an idea of how much of the starch in the grain of corn salad or corn grain or ground corn, high moisture, how much of it is available. And then I also use Professor Combs' total track NDF digestibility measurement from the University of Wisconsin, which incorporates a number of different uh, parameters and is essentially today's RFQ on steroids to help us get an idea of what the fiber availability is to a high-performing dairy cow. So a lot to know about feeding and testing our forages. Another expert telling us about it again, Dr. John Gazer. John with Rock River Labs and Colby on our Alpharex Ask the Expert program.